what we feel is the greatest good for the animal or the best thing for the animal may not really be the best thing for them. They may have a completely different perspective. So let's look at it from a human point of view. You know? uh, I'm sure all our parents had some expectations from us, but that may have not been the best thing for us, right? Like for example, if my parents had an expect, for example, if my parents had an expectation that my doctor go, but which is science, I can't believe it. So there is no point. So my parents will think of the best thing for me. There is no doubt in that intention. But for me, that isn't the best thing. And this the same thing applies to animals also. So especially when it comes to rescue work, I have come across a lot of animals where you know the rescuers are running behind them. They want to ca catch them. They want to save them from whatever is happening. The animal simply says, "I don't need all of this." I, I really don't want any kind of human intervention, and especially I don't want to be pricked and given medications and so on and so forth. So just let me be. Okay. Now, as a rescuer, this may or may not be acceptable to us because as a rescuer, most of us would want to work towards making that animal survive. So there, the animal communicator's role comes into play because we are neutral. We can't take sides over it. So if the animal is saying this, we need to respect the animal as much as we would respect a human saying this. You know. And of course, as a communicator, we can always negotiate with them. We can tell them that nee, hum se nahi ho we can't leave you in such a bad state. Let us help you. And we can see ki kahan tak we can reach a middle ground. But we can't force things on them. I think this is one of my biggest learnings with animal communication, not only with my own animals, but also with my uh, fosters, that whenever they have asked me to do something and I have done that, I've seen a greater uh, response from them than otherwise. I remember this one dog who came to me completely distraught and uh, she had fallen into a pit and they had to put a, you know, a, thread, a string around her and pull her out. And she was very, very, uh, she could not trust at all. In fact, even in my house, she was only attached to me. She wouldn't even trust my husband so much. If my mother came over, she wouldn't trust her as well. And when this dog came home, she told me clearly, don't uh, medicate me, don't do anything to me, just let me be for two days. You know? Even if I don't come out at the end, too, it's fine. But mujhe, na, bhi don't come close to me. Khana rakdo, pani rakdo. Agar mujhe chahiye, I will have it. Otherwise, I will not have it. But you give me two days to just be. And for two days, I didn't do anything with her. I just let her be. Wo bhi rahi. Thoda -thoda ke, wo bas pani thi, khana bhi khaya usne. But on the second day, after 48 hours, she came to me as if you know she was mine. And then she let me push tablets into her throat. Uske mein heart thi. I used to pick her up. I used to do anything. And she would not at all like uh, you know get violent or aggressive with me. So this is the kind of trust that we can gain from them if we trust them and give them the respect of being adult individuals who understand what they want. We always feel that we know better. We know better. But it's not. They know what they want and it's high time we start listening to them and give them what they need rather than posing our opinions on them. So it's like it's very important, you know, to be able to communicate with animals, even when we are rescuing it with a very good good intention, right? Absolutely. And it's better for the rescuer also, no? Imagine, uh, I get so many rescuers come to me and say that, uh, uh, you know, I'm a bad luck, 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 you know, no matter how much effort I put into it, they die, they keep dying. And uh, if you actually speak to them, you would realize that they are choosing to come to you because they see you as their hospice. They they see you as a place where they can leave their bodies peacefully. And that is why they're choosing you. In a lot of cases that happens, that they choose you to come to you so that they can go peacefully. Because if you they can't even leave their bodies because something or the other will keep happening. So if you know that, at least from the animal's point of view, that this is journey hai, and nothing that you do is really going to save them as we think of saving. Okay, For them, that death is also saving only because they're getting rid of whatever they must be going through physically. It really makes the rescue also be at peace. It's not bad luck. Hai. It's not their bad luck because bad luck because animals are dying. Animals choose that they are last moments with them. That is why they are choosing that. So we should be privileged that the animal gives us that opportunity. Because a lot of us, even with the dear animals, we don't get to see them in their last moments. I lost one of my dogs in July 2019 to cancer. And he chose to go when none of us were at the farmhouse. Because he said that I have lived life I've lived independently, so I have vulnerable time, I don't want you around. And I was living at the farm with him for him because he had cancer. And when I returned to the city for a workshop, that's when he passed away. So a lot of us don't get the opportunity to even be with them when they are about to drop their bodies. So we should be very grateful that they choose to go in our presence. So as you just cited this example, I just remembered one thing that I came across. Uh, is it like uh, possible that we can even communicate with animals when they pass away? Absolutely is it true? Yes. Absolutely yes. Because uh, we, when we connect telepathically, we are connecting to the energy of that being, irrespective of what the being is, human or animal or, you know, trees, plants, whatever it is. So, so the rule of science is that energy cannot be created nor be destroyed. It can be transferred from one form to the other. So even if the body has been dropped, uh, you can always connect to the energy because the energy still exists. It may exist in the form of a spirit or energy or it may have reincarnated and taken another physical form, but you can still connect to it without causing it any problems or side effects. But this is only for animals and nature, not for humans because I don't do that at all. So a disclaimer, please, based on this talk, don't try to connect with deceased humans. It's only for animals and nature because I have no experience with human communication. So it's like, is it also through telepathy that you like try to communicate with deceased uh, animals? It's the same. The process okay. is the same. There is absolutely no difference between talking to an animal who's alive and talking to an animal who's faster. Okay. Because we connect to the energy irrespective of whether they are alive or not. It's like we connect to the energy, not to the physical body. Not the physical body. And therefore, when we speak to animals, uh, even who are alive, it doesn't matter what they are doing in that point of time. You know, a lot of people ask me, if they are sleeping, they are playing, they are eating, they are eating, they disturb them, and it doesn't because we are connecting to the uh, energy. And the physical uh, form, whatever it does, the energy is always aware. That's, that's the higher self. So I've spoken to animals, my own dog, who, uh, the other dog who passed away in March 2020, he passed away and I was talking to him constantly as he was passing away. I could sense him leaving his body. And 
while he was passing away and even after he passed away i was constantly in conversation with him so in that state also you can talk to him An another of my dog he suffered a seizure ekdam say i don't know what happened and he adopted us so since we have not always had him mujhe itni medical history bhi uski pata nahi thi so um, as i was uh, uh, just sitting and suddenly he started to have a seizure so while he was having the seizure i spoke to him and asked him kya karu kyunki raat ke 12:30 baje the so doctor ne poor uthane tak bhi time lagega because fortunately we have good beds but they have to be awake not to wake up my call at that time so while he was having a seizure he told me just wait you know i'll be fine just wait and within 30 seconds he was okay it was fortunately a very short short, short lived or seizure that he had so it doesn't matter what they do physically you can speak to them constantly and that is why i think it is easier to speak to them when you are at a distance kyunki hum humans ko itni aadat hoti hai na ki acha aap mein aankal ke baat karo you know body language dekho ki jab hum unko dekhte hain kaise wo khel rahe the hame lagta hai ki wo unse baat nahi kar rahe then we don't get those answers so it becomes easier to not be around them physically to have smoother conversations yes. ma'am uh, like uh, can we just uh, like have a discussion about some common gestures of animal you know which can be easily identified by common people so that in case we see such uh, gestures uh, being uh, shown by our animals so that we can identify it and also you know take required precautions or whatever they want you know just there, there might be some common gestures of animals that are easy to identify and but we are not aware that they want to communicate something to us so if we can just discuss about some common gestures it will be really so better. as far as gestures are concerned they will not actually be a part of telepathic communication like i said you know because we uh, communicate telepathically directly to the energy so body ka usse kuch lena dena nahi hota hai but we can definitely put talk in terms in terms of body language more in terms of body language rather than talking in terms of telepathic communication so let's speak of uh, i will mostly focus on dogs and cats uh, and not others because usme meri jankari zyada hai and i don't want to give out any wrong information to people so uh, basic so dogs communicate a lot to their body language dogs and cats they will communicate a lot to their body language and agar hum basic cheezon ko sirf dhyan se dekhenge bhi to hum easily pata chal jayega ki wo kya kya hame kehna chahiye okay so i'm sure and guys you can answer in the chat box okay when i ask you a question please feel free to answer we all, for all of us who had pets okay when we go to kiss them what do they do most times kya action hota hai unka in the uh, camera on you can show me in the okay you can put it move away okay what else be a little more specific move away maybe wo kya karte hain okay uh, they lick you back okay What do they do? You haven't you seen them do this? You know, when you say move away, haven't you just seen them just kind of rotating their neck? Sometimes they come to cuddle, yeah, and sometimes they move away their face. So that simple gesture should tell us that the animal is not interested. But हम क्या करते हैं? हम उनको लेके ऐसे खींच के मुआ कर देते हैं. And also <laughs> you know? a selfie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly a selfie. How many of us have seen that? जैसे ही हम अपना फोन निकाले बाहर, the minute they see it, they'll turn turn their face away, isn't it? Yeah. So the basic concept behind this. Good for you, Agam. So you write if you post the kiss on the dog. <laughs> Someone got bitten when they tried to kiss the dog. Those people. Consent is the same for humans and animals. You can't change the the topic of consent remains the same across species. Very important in animal communication also. Consent is extremely important. Important. So when you are talking about taking a picture also, most of our animals will turn away because the fact that we are keeping something in their mouth in their mouth in itself is very intimidating for them. Okay. So uh, we said just I think today in Delhi Times and uh, the past few days there was an article uh, in the. Times of India, the Times, the Bombay Times, Delhi Times version. Okay, उसमें आया था कि कैसे cuddling is not really the best way to go about uh, interacting with your animals because they don't like it. Because uh, for us humans, frontal approach is a very natural way to greet. ना हम hug करते हैं, हम handshake करते हैं, we face to face करते हैं. Do you see dogs doing that? Where do you see dogs going? एकदम face to face. Where do you see that usually? Yes, that is why Renu's consent. When they fight, yes, Renu's that is why consent is important. when they fight right the confrontations jab hote hain tab you see cats or dogs going face to face so hamare liye jo greeting hai ya jo meeting hai wo unke liye fighting hai to imagine karo jab humko unko hamara front part dikhate hain aur jaate hain unke paas to unko kya lag raha hai unko ye lag raha hai ki hum fight karne aaye hain because that is not how they meet so therefore you will see when dogs are friendly and they are trying to get to know to you know each other wo log side se se ghoom ke jaate hain fir wo unka bump us nip karte because that's their way of greeting right so of course we don't need to go and say their bumps but we can definitely avoid uh, going like up front to them and show our side so when we show our side it is better for them to go samajh aata hai ki acha ye friends hai and then allow them to come to you so moving their face their ears going behind you know that is also a sign of them being alert usually ears ka piche jayenge to kuch unko agar janna hai to ears piche jayenge nahi to when they are calm they will not do that licking their nose constantly is also a sign of stress if you suddenly see your your animal constantly licking their nose it's a sign of stress licking their paws it can can be a sign of stress okay so uh, panting can be a sign of stress so when you see these signals which are stress signals stop doing whatever you're doing with them because know that they are not comfortable No, हमें लगता है कि ठीक है क्या होगा बट कॉन्स्टेंटली अगर हम ये चीज कर रहे हैं जिससे दे आर नॉट कम्फर्टेबल देल बी इन स्ट्रेस थ्रू आउट इमेजिन हम किसी के साथ रह रहे हैं जो हमारे हमसे इतने बड़े हैं और कॉन्स्टेंटली हमें आगे से हमारे ऊपर से हमें हक कर रहे हैं इमेजिन हाउ हाउ स्केर डाउन अलाउ दम टू कम टू और यू नो बी एट देर लेवल अगर आप उस हाइट से करोगे तो ऑब्वियसली कोई भी डर जाएगा कॉन्स्टेंटली करते रहोगे फॉर योर्स एंड यर्स यू वॉन्ट टू मेक योर एनिमल वेरी स्केर एंड टिमिट एंड उनको भी सेम इशूज होंगे जो हमें होते हैं जैसे ब्लड प्रेशर है या यू नो देव हार्ट इशूज एंड इट्स अट इट कैन सो दीज आर फ्यू सिग्नल साइंस एंड सिग्नल्स विच आर इजिली डिटेक्टेबल but we often tend to ignore them 
Yeah, and there's also one thing uh, that the animals do. I mean, especially the dogs. You know, they keep on moving around, moving around, round and round, trying to bite their tail or something. So, what is it actually? What do they really want? Like, they keep on moving in a circle and just trying to hold their tail, I guess. Uh, so again, with animal communication, there can never be a one size fit all kind of an answer because every animal is different, mm -hmm. right? So for example, if you ask me, Ki, uh, why do I do something? I may have a different answer from someone else doing it as well. Mm -hmm. It won't be the same. So like every animal is different, the answer will be different. So unless we speak to that animal, we will not know what is that particular animal's reason for not doing it. Okay, from Makes a communication yeah, perspective. Sorry, but from, terms, like... yeah, but from, from a behavioral point of view, there could be neurological issues for the animal. The animal could simply be bored or uske liye kar hai. it could also be their means of dealing with anxiety. So when they are stressed, when they are anxious, they could be health issues, there could be impinging of nerves, there can be several reasons why they could be doing it. Right? From as simple as bored hai, to as serious as neurological issues also. Mm -hmm. And do you think like animal loves this routineness that humans tend to follow, you know, waking up at time, having breakfast and so on, like we prefer having a routine life. So do you think like animals also want that kind of uh, routine life? Do they do you think like they are used to it or gradually they become habituated and as they adopt? So do you think all humans like No, definitely not. to their lives? Definitely not. Likewise, <laughs> likewise for animals. There are some animals who don't like their routine. They don't have to eat at the same time, they don't have to eat at the same time, they don't have to walk at the same time. They don't have to change. Unko. And then there are some animals who get bored like in a day or two and they constantly need different kind of uh, mental and uh, physical stimulation as well. So like I said previously, there is no one size fits all answer with animal communication. Just the way every human is different, every animal is also going to be different. So unless you ask them, you don't know. But having said that, there will be animals who love routine and then there will be animals who absolutely don't love routine. Yeah. So I guess we are also having some uh, questions in our chat box. I think I'll take some of them. Yes. Uh, yeah, we have a question from Akansh uh, Ramadhyani. So uh, the question is, do animals uh, mirror us in terms of emotions? Absolutely. So look at it as living together, right? When we also live together with our parents, our spouses, our siblings, we take on each other's habits. We are used to, habituated to seeing them and doing that and then we take it on. Just like that, animals will also learn from us and they will take on our habits. So a lot of our animals will mirror our emotions, our personalities from a context of uh, me being an animal communicator, most times you know, mirroring wale mere paas cases aate hai, wo negative hi hote hai. Koi issue chal raha hai, and then they are you know, mirroring. So for example, um, I recently spoke to, which what example would be relevant? Uh, I, I spoke to a dog who uh, had started peeing in the house suddenly. And when I asked her, she said that my humans have started fighting a lot. So, mujhe wo dar ke mare, you know, stress se I start, I, I pee. So a lot of their behavior or even health would be because of mirroring. And I get those cases more because we show that we have to But normally, we have to say that human is friendly, human 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 friendly, that is also beautiful. That's a well answered thing, I guess. Um, so I'm also keeping the uh, floor open now. If our viewers have any other questions, they can uh, simply voice uh, their question or if they want, they can also write their question to us. So yeah, we also have so another if question. You want to well, uh, ask questions kindly, unmute yourself, ask your question, and then please mute yourselves again. That would be easier for all of us. Yeah. So we have another question from uh, Minakshi Mishra. Uh, yes. She uh, says, like, uh, my dog passed away after being with us for 15 years. He was like my first child. Uh, I still miss him every day. How can I communicate with him? How? how? Okay. Yeah. So uh, how you can communicate with him? Maybe uh, we are going to do a live communication, and maybe we can speak to your dog so that you get some experience of it as well. Uh, but otherwise, just to simply answer your question, take a pen, take a paper, and just write down whatever you feel your animal is sharing with you without thinking. The more you wait to think, the more your logical mind will say, hey, aisa kuch hota nahi. So, bina soche, bas aap jitna lik sakte, utna likho, and whatever you write would definitely be what your animal is sharing. Thank you. Sometimes I do feel his presence, actually. Absolutely. I still, I feel his presence sometimes. And uh, recently, I had a dream that uh, it was like real, that uh, he had come to the house and, and he, used, he used to like taking chilled milk. He loved taking chilled milk and we used to give him a bowl in the morning and once in the evening. So, don't share too much information. If you want everyone to speak to him, you share it in the end. When you talk about it, it will happen, then tell you. Okay. Otherwise, sure. it won't be fun. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll try to have a communication with you all. Yeah, nice. If there are no more questions, we could take that then. Start I, have, I have a small question. Yes, 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 also, yes. Since the entire topic is very fascinating, I just want to know when is the next uh, camp going to come up that we can learn this from you? <laughs> so my next boot camp is happening from the 1st to 5th of June, which is a five-day short course. Uh, the fees are for 15 99 And the one-month long course has just begun and now the seats are full. But the next course for one full month, which is a longer duration course, will happen on the 30th of June. Is there any special concession if you go through them? <laughs> no, sorry. You can pay in installments, but I don't believe in discounts. <laughs> Is this is something so fascinating. I guess some kind of charge must be applicable. Absolutely. It's a lot of effort from mine. I have to be very patient with everyone. I can't rush things. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Any yeah. other questions, guys? Before we move ahead. Yeah. We have another one. It says, in case of animals left home, sometimes personal anxiety comes in the way. Any way to get this? 
human any kind of communication we have to consider human emotion we are all humans and we uh, we won't be able to always be very neutral right like i was saying as communicators we are supposed to be neutral kai ba mere sath bhi aise hota hai when i'm speaking to a sick animal and the animal is saying ki nahi you know i'm done i don't want any uh, medication i also feel like are yaar thoda kar do please you know but as a communicator i'm not allowed to because mujhe neutral rehna bahut zaruri hai as a communicator i'm a medium i'm only allowed to get messages from them and convey to their uh, human and vice versa so uh, what rashali was asking is about lost animals a lot of times what happens is when animals go missing they may have left home willingly and they may not want to return at all and in this case often because most of us have a connection with animals most of us have pet parents and we kind of want the animals to reunite and our emotions can 